There are so many things to love about heirloom sewing. Fabrics, ribbons, techniques, embellishments, French lace, hand embroidery, machine embroidery, the list goes on. Double needle pin tucks are easy and fun to do, but have you ever thought about pin tucking on a serger? Pin tucking magic, I call it. Other heirlooms for your sewing pleasure today are hand embroidery, a circus filled home decorating project, something for precious baby feet, and of course, my vintage clothing. We are going to have fun today. Welcome to my sewing room. I love baby day gowns and this one is so sweet. I want to share with you how, exactly how beautiful those serger pin tucks are. Can you see the three little tucks on either side of the front bodice? Now if you look closely at these tucks you will say, now Martha, I know those were folded and stitched on a sewing machine, but I promise you they're not. These are made on a serger. The beautiful little uh, bias piping that has this soft baby gingham. Then down toward the bottom of this adorable little day gown is what I call a fancy band. The gingham and then a strip with three more of those beautiful serger tucks. Another strip of gingham, three more of the beautiful serger tucks, and a fancy little ruffle which, of course, you guessed it, has been finished on the bottom by serger. Now let's just see how we make those serger pin tucks. First of all, you draw a line to indicate where the middle is going to be, and your fabric is bigger than the bodice because you're going to cut it out later. Now then, you're going to use a cover stitch with the pin tuck foot on your serger. First of all, you're going to make the center pin tuck and then use your presser foot or other guides to know how you're going to go on either side. After you have done the serger pin tucks, it's now time on the little fancy band to put the green band on. So this is placed and then it is surged right on. Now we're moving right ahead with our fancy band. This kind of pin tuck, which stops and then releases the fabric, is called a release pin tuck. To make them, you use that same cover stitch with the pin tuck foot. You sew down to the line you have drawn and you stop sewing. Okay, make as many as you want. Then, like you used to do when your mama taught you how to make darts, remember she always made you pull it to the back and tie off your threads? Well, that's exactly what you do. You pull your serger threads to the back and tie them off. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today my dear friend Missy Billingsley. Missy is an education consultant for Baby Lock USA. Missy, welcome to the show. Thanks, Martha. And these adorable day gowns and bonnets and everything you've made. Oh, it's a lot of fun stuff, and it's so good to be here again. Thank you. So Okay, today what we're going to talk about is serger cover stitch pin tucks. And as Martha said, you're going to start with a piece of fabric, and it's going to have a line drawn down the center roughly, depending on how big a piece that you need to create. I've used um, just a regular marking pin here, so it'll be easier to see, but I would normally use a water-soluble pin to, so the line can wash away when you're finished, or if you like, fold a crease. So you can not have to worry about taking the water soluble pin away and as long as you can see it good then you should be fine with just a crease in the fabric. So after you've drawn your line then you're going to go to your machine and the foot that we're using is the pin tuck foot. It has a groove on the bottom of the foot that allows this plastic guide to sit on the plate of the machine and allow the fabric to raise up as it's being fed into the machine. So we're going to start here and I've got two pin tucks stitched already and I like using the outside edge of my presser foot as my guide because that way I don't have to draw a whole bunch of lines. So what we're going to do is I've already got the two pin tucks stitched. I'm going to raise the toe of my presser foot since it is spring loaded and I'm just going to stitch the fabric into the machine. It's going to do all the work for me because I have that plastic guide sitting on the, the bed of the machine and it just raises the fabric up. So just chain off a little bit Raise your presser foot, pull it straight to the back, and cut your thread. So there you have your nice, beautiful pin tucks. And then you would simply press them all one direction, which is what I have on the piece right here. They're all pressed one direction. So then you can actually trim your piece to size. On the dress, it was trimmed about an inch from this top stitching line, trimmed away at the top, and trimmed away again at the bottom from that top stitching line. 
Okay, that's just one variation of the pin tuck. And here's a couple of other samples that we've made. This one is just using some different fabrics. You don't have to use just a batiste fabric or a cotton. You could use a silk dupioni and play with your fabrics. Stitch some pin tucks one direction of fabric and stitch some the opposite direction because on the dupioni, I have more of a raised tuck to my fabric where on the one direction, it will lay over flat. Okay, here's a cotton velveteen. Again, they're more raised pin tucks like you would find on your sewing machine. And then here we have some more pin tucks, but I did like a crosshatch grid to give you some more ideas on how to use your pin tuck foot. Okay, so then here's the little pieces of the fancy band that we've gotten finished. This piece is going to attach to the bottom edge of your dress. Then we're going to attach the next piece up to that. Of course, right sides together. Flip it down. Then you're going to attach your ruffle to the bottom and finish the construction of your dress. Okay. Oh, pretty Missy, easy so Missy, far. It is easy, and those pin tucks look exactly like machine pin tucks. They do. Take they, too long to make. <laughs> they are, these are so much easier, and they're beautiful they really every are. time. <laughs> now, what we're going to look at here is release pin tucks by serger. I've drawn a line across the bottom where I want my pin tucks to stop. Now, when I have these blue lines on here. I really need to stop there, but once the blue lines are gone, if I've missed a couple of stitches past, it's okay. So again, we're going to take this fabric to the machine, and I'm just going to use the edge of my presser foot. The first ones I stitched, I drew the lines about an inch apart. Edge of my presser foot is my guide. Stitch down that line. But now the trick here is to pull in the threads to the back. So I'm going to raise my needles up. I'm going to raise my presser foot, and then with my shish kebab stick or an Allen wrench, pull the threads out to the front of the machine. Okay. Once you pull them out to the front, use your scissors or your cutter on the side of the machine, then pull it straight to the back. And the trick is, after you pulled it straight to the back, it pulls your threads to the back for you. So well, you don't have is, to pull them to the back. That is fascinating, Missy. Oh, thank you so much for sharing these fun, quick, and easy serger pin tucks. You're and now welcome. Missy has some sewing inspirations to share with you. Missy, all of these serger projects are absolutely wonderful. This beautiful little blanket. You see, I see pin tucks on there. There are pin tucks. You'll find pin tucks on most of my serger projects because I do love them so much. We have um, serger created pin tucks. This is where we actually drew the lines for the pin tucks to stitch to be able to follow the lines. Then it has um, a bridging with ribbon in it, some embroideries down the center. It has bow tie quilt blocks in all four corners and just that beautiful gingham fabric. It just really sets it off. I Robin's love that. Robin's egg blue is one of my very favorites. Mm -hmm. Now, Missy, this pillowcase is one of my favorite projects because everybody can use beautiful pillowcases. Most and I definitely. see these wonderful serger pin tucks mm -hmm. along with, I think this, you did this on the machine, didn't you? Yeah, we have serger you created pin tucks again. Then we have a little lace insertion created with um, traditional heirloom serging. Okay. Then we have a continuous embroidery created on the embroidery machine, um, more bridging and a big fancy ruffle. And this would also be great for a little girl's pillowcase dress with a little fancy band around the bottom. Oh, it would, Missy. It's just okay. beautiful. Oh, such a pretty ecru and white, two of my favorite combinations. And I see more pin tucks and more bridging, this time with no ribbon run through it. Yes, ma'am, no ribbon and run through that one. And the beautiful pin tucks. Serger pin tucks, and serger insertion. cover stitch puffing. You know, when Joanna got too big for uh, heirloom dresses mm -hmm. every Christmas, I made her one of these heirloom pillows, and she kept them on her bed when she says, you know, I'm too sophisticated to wear heirloom dresses. You know, that teenage year. Oh, yes. Oh, the little baby bonnet that matches the day it matches gown the little day with gown the three little serger pin tucks and just a simple little casing in the back. Very, very easy to very make. Very simple casing, very simple bonnet. Took and mm, about 30 minutes or so. And booties made, booties made in, to the match. Hoop, in, in the hoop and in the hoop. Mm -hmm. Now, what are we going to come up with next? <laughs> I know. There's just so many things. This is a sweet little pajama top or just a little shell. Mm -hmm. And Missy, you've it's, used the uh, beading here where you've run the ribbon the through. Bead, yes, it has the, bead, has the ribbon inserted in it with a little embroidered design on it. Um, then we have just a, a Swiss edging as well. Wonderful little serger tucks mm -hmm. again that look exactly like machine folded tucks, which I never could get those straight, I might add. Well, you can get them straight doing you them can, on the serger. I think, I think I can I do I think it. you can. <laughs> and now Missy has a so quick, so easy project to share with you.
Missy, those are the cutest booties I have ever seen. And I know they're easy to make, and I'm going to let you tell about making those booties. They are very easy to make. They're done in the embroidery hoop, and everything is stitched completely except for the construction of the booty itself. This one has the embroidery that's left on from the embroidery design itself, and these two on the outside are just stitched with just the outside stitches without the embroidery in the center. So you can do them either way. So what we're going to look at is how they're created. Very simple. You're going to hoop a water-soluble piece of stabilizer. This is the mesh type water-soluble, not the film type, because it has more stability to hold your stitches. And you can combine as many of the designs as you can in your embroidery hoop. In my hoop, I could put the two soles of the booties plus the two tops. So once you've got all those stitched out, and it's similar to stitching an applique design. You're going to lay down your fabrics, and it's going to stitch a running stitch all the way around the design. Then you're going to turn it over on both sides and trim it away. And that's one time that I like to keep this handy in my sewing room because you have little threads that are, fr that are fuzzies everywhere. And you can run this lint roller across those fuzzies and it will pick it up and you won't have to search to get all those fuzzies off. Okay. So you're going to uh, stitch these pieces out. Then you're going to take them to the sink and wash away the stabilizer. Once you've washed away the stabilizer, then you're going to have the pieces here. The lining is done with a flannel so it's nice and soft for the baby's foot. And you, so you've got your two soles and the tops of your shoes. The next step you're going to do is you're going to take the, sole, the top of your shoe and take the back edge and place it together and do a zigzag stitch just to close up this edge. Okay, so then you're going to have to take the sole of the booty, you're going to place the flannel to the inside so it lines up with the flannel on the inside of the booty, and you're going to place it together, zigzag stitch all the way around the outside edge of the, the sole of the booty, stitching right here along the edge. I actually used a, fab a thread that matched my satin stitching from my embroidery so it would match on the machine. So once you've stitched those, then you can take your little ribbons and put them on the sides. This one I thought would be really cute because it has the sewing motif fabrics and not everybody has little ones to sew for. So what I did with this one, I did the same thing. I used a sewing motif fabric. It has tomato pin cushions on the outside and on the bottom it has a little tape measure with another little pin cushion. That was strategic placing of, of fabric. I, I got you. <laughs> okay. So, but what is nice about this one is then I could create this little oval shaped cutout and I ran a gathering stitch along the edge, filled it with a, a stuffing. Then when I put it in here, it creates a little pin cushion. So for those friends of yours who need a little gift and they don't have any little ones to sew for, that is just a perfect little cute sewing gift for any sewing room. And the other one, it could hold your bobbins or your pins or presser feet, anything you can think of. It'll, it's a great little hidey hole to hold your things. Wouldn't that be a fun gift? It is a fun gift. To take for a friend who loves to sew. And of course, the little booties are wonderful they for are. all your shower presents and mm -hmm. for the newborns in your family. Oh, Missy, that is so much fun. They Thank are, you. They're Thank a lot you of fun. so much. You're very welcome. And now I have some hand embroidery to share with you. I'm so happy to have as my guest today my very dear friend Beverly Sheldrick from New Zealand. Beverly is an internationally known author and teacher, such a close friend of mine, and it is just wonderful for me to welcome you to the show, Beverly. Oh, thank you, Martha. Thank you. It was a real pleasure to do this gown and this receiving blanket, plus Beautiful. its other little things. Beautiful. I like it too. Um, specifically for this very special birthday of yours. <laughs> and also you can see that I have used these three loops of lace. Um, I've used them also on the dress, on the sleeves and on the front of the gown, Father, Son and Holy Ghost, but in a quiet and restrained manner. And then the cross in the slightly stronger color just to show that it's there with the white on white, the ribbon um, across the top, and then the little embroidery in the sides. Now, what I'm wanting to show our, our viewers today is these little field roses here. And while they're, they're actually very small, very simple, and they are so easy to get wrong. <laughs> 
So I will be spending just a little bit longer than I would normally, just showing you little techniques as to how to get them a little better than than they can be. Um, also the cross, of course, which is, as you can see, a very simple one. So we'll just look at them quickly here. Um, the first stitch that I can see here is a bad stitch. It's not a good stitch. You can see it's skinny, it's narrow, it really doesn't show up very well. We want it more like this with a little bit of fullness. Now if you find you do one like this, then you can often just rescue it by putting something in underneath there like that. But it's still skinny and we don't want it to be skinny. So you can see here that I've, the ones I've done here, they're just nice and puffy, but it does take quite a bit of control. And you can see this last one that I've got here is a bad one. Skinny, um, yeah. It's skinny, <laughs> yes. It looks as though you were running <laughs> short of thread. So here we are here. And of course, the cross, which you can see is just two straight pieces of silk ribbon and then held in place with French knots. I would not normally use such a wide color a gap, but I wanted you to be able to see them. Normally I would use a colour that was a little closer. So here we are. You will say that I've got a big fat needle here and I'm going to hold that there. Now I'm going to just pull this very carefully over like that. And sometimes you find that you have to just push this in underneath there like that so that the ribbon stays um, like it, st st it doesn't get too skinny, it keeps its width. Then we're going to come to the next one which is going to be very close to it like that. But it is very important to keep the, that big fat needle underneath that um, little petal that you've got there because even now if you're not careful you will find that it can just uh, when you pull this through it will go skinny on you again so you just need to do them slowly do them carefully you can see how I'm just making quite sure that this width stays there like that like that and then take your needle and move it around and then continue on. I'm just going to put that back in there a moment because I want to be sure that when I come to this other side that it we keep, we don't pull it when you pull it through like that, that it doesn't lose that bounce. Now I am doing these just slightly further apart than I would normally and that's really just so that you can see what I'm doing, remembering I'm putting that in there like that and I'll be pulling it through. And then there's a fourth one to go in which is easy enough for you to do because I just want to spend a moment showing you this cross. You can see how I have done this long piece first. So decide on the length that you want your cross to be. And then when you put your crossbar like this, you can see, you can judge the proportions. And it's usually roughly about a third. And then I'm just going to pull that so it's a little bit firmer. And then take your thread, whichever you're using, um, and two wraps of your French knot and then down, pull it tight of course so that when it's sitting on the ground and then you will just be knotting it down like that. The centre one will hold that central section together and then you will do, after you've done this, you will then do the side ones so you'll put one in each corner like this as you can see here. That will hold any tails firm and then I like to put another one down here and then another one at the bottom which once more will help to secure your tails and keep just a nice simple little cross there.
Beverly, this is just one of the most beautiful dresses and the Christine blankets, and I love your three loops. You know how I love the number three built into uh, baptismal and christening robes. Beverly, thank you so much. My pleasure, Martha. And now I have a home decorating segment to share with you. Missy, this is the most adorable pillow. Tell us a little bit about the corners in the center. Well, the corners are made as pinwheel blocks, and the center is made as a square within a square with the embroidery in the center. It also gives you some options on the side and the top panels for, to add a little bit of embroidery if you want to add a baby's name and a birthday, something to personalize it. And this adorable quilt is made using the same techniques, just a little bigger. Same techniques, a little bit bigger, and Show us how put to together the same way. Okay, first what we're going to do is we're going to create several half square triangles. And you can see by the pillow and the quilt, I created a lot of them. So you're going to create your half square triangle, press to the dark side of the fabric. So when you're finished, it's going to look like this. What you'll need to create one pinwheel is four half square triangles. And it's how you place the fabrics to put them together that creates the look of the pinwheel. So that's your little pinwheel block. It goes together fast and easy. There are a lot of tools that can help you put those together. So the next one is the center block. You're gonna take your center block and you're gonna place a fabric on the top and bottom. And if you notice, I cut this on the diagonal because I wanted it to be kind of diamond shaped. So place your fabric on the top and the bottom, press those with the dark, press to the dark of the fabric, dark side of fabric, and then place your fabric on the opposite sides and sew those together as well. So when you're finished with that, you're gonna have this square of fabric. And what I found is handy is to use some, some of the great rulers and tools out there. If you'll take this ruler and place it along the top edge, lining up that 90 degree mark with your corner, trim across the top and do all four sides that way, it's gonna give you a perfectly trimmed square for your center of your pillow or your quilt. Okay, so next is gonna be the construction. You're gonna place, you're gonna take four of your pinwheels and two of your center fabrics. These are the same size as the center block of your pillow. And you're gonna take a pinwheel, place it on opposite sides on both of the pieces. Just the two pieces now, not three, because you have the pillow for the center. Okay, so the next one, it's just a matter of putting together a nine patch. Here's your pinwheel panels for the top and the bottom. I've taken the same size panel that goes across the top and the middle. I've placed it on the side. Place them right sides together, sew a seam, top and bottom, you finish with your pillow top. Then you're ready to construct your pillow. It. Oh, that's it. Missy, this is so sweet. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And now I'd like to share a piece from my vintage collection with you. This little dress is absolutely wonderful. It's a very simple little dress with a pretty little sleeves, very tailored sleeves, and I love this big collar. And it has the original bows on the shoulder, but I want to show you my favorite part of the dress. It has the pin tucks or the folded tucks underneath that gather in all of the fullness around the neckline. And then we have more, those are release tucks. And then we have more pin tucks that come down on the skirt, two and three and two, or a three and three. And then the back is, has a sweet little detail I'd like to share with you. It has the um, drawstring in the neckline, as you've seen on many of my antique pieces. So the little dress could be drawn up to fit the little girl just perfectly around the shoulders. And then three little buttons, and there is even a little loop and a little button to button the back collar together so it will not open up. And for my sewing from the heart today, I would like to share a letter that Mary from Missouri sent to me. This little lady who is 91 years old is crocheting lap robes for the older people at the nursing home where her pastor is the activities director. She and her husband were always there to help others in any way they could. When he passed away, she wondered what she could do to help others. One Sunday during services at the nursing home, she noticed that some of the patients looked as if they were cold. Then the idea hit her that she could crochet lap robes for all of them. This wonderful Christian lady is my mother, Thelma Bradley. Well, Mary, I thank you so much for telling me about your precious mother, Thelma. And Thelma, if you're watching, I certainly thank you for making all those wonderful crocheted robes for the ladies uh, and the individuals at the uh, nursing home. I want to thank all of you for being here today. 
I really, really have had a good time, and most importantly, I hope you have. And I would like to invite you to come back next time. Thank you.